The Fuji X-H1 was a very confusing camera. I don't think even Fuji knows where it lies in their totem pole of life. It was so weird because the X-T3 came out like very quickly after and destroyed it in all ways. So we don't really know what the point of the X-H series is. Is it the video centric camera? They came out later saying it's the rugged camera that can withstand anything. You throw it at a truck, press the timer on that shutter. That'll be a good shot. That's a good shot. So let me make your job easy, Fuji. I got a list. It's pink. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we're on the Fuji X-T4 with the Fuji 23mm Tony 2. We're giving the Viltrox lenses a break. They've done enough jumping around. Oh, the smoothness. Oh God, already? Oh, we're really gonna do this. Your audience retention rate has dropped so significantly in the past. We've analyzed the data. The audience leaves at this point. We know they do. Why would they stay? You're offering nothing. You do nothing for the world. This world would be such a better place if you just focused. You have a list. What are you doing? Are you really going to hold that up? It's not even working. What have you done? Oh, you look so foolish right now. That didn't work? What's your backup plan? You have none. You have no plan in life. You're going nowhere. What the hell have you done? Just stop, end this madness. So let me make your job easy, Fuji. The X-H line needs to be your video line. And then the X-T4 is your hybrid line. And then your cheaper models do neither good, but they're cheap and that's fine. The X-H, nope. XS10. That was a good camera. Not bad. It's just the battery life a little weird. Some of your lenses don't behave right, IBIS wise. We all know your problem. Wow, that autofocus. That's fantastic. Sony makes it so easy. It's not even in the shot. You're supposed to be in the shot. Oh, you piece of shit. Oh, that would be so good if I had more table space. But Sony has the hybrid in the A7 III. They got their super high megapixel in the A7R. And then the A7S is for video. And so you can make your choices. You're not gonna do landscape photography with the A7S, so you don't buy it. I will, I'll do it. But you do whatever you want with this line. This line should die. The X-T5 should be photocentric. You give them the flip up screen and we forget about it. And then I go to the video centric line, the X-H2, which has these specific features. Autofocus, improved. Not that I need to do this, showing you lens caps, but the fact that I can't, even if I wanted to, there, it worked that time. Back to me. Yay. When's it gonna F up? Oh, that took a while. Longer than the first time, but the settings are the same. They didn't change. Uh-oh. Ah. Sometimes it goes back first. I just need the reliability and the smoothness of a Sony autofocus system stolen like a pirate and put in here. Do it. You got the eye detection. I want head detection when I turn. I'm still a human boy. Sometimes it doesn't do it. The XS10 was better, but it's not there yet. And your lenses will get to those. This Fuji X-H2, I really want that low megapixel, higher dynamic range. Can you imagine the magic? Somehow the X-T4 has like on par with full frame dynamic range, even with a 26 megapixel. So knock that down to 10 or 12 max. I don't know the math and how that would work with 4K, just do it. And then we got magic on our hands. Giant pixels, better in low light. You're basically full frame. Fanboys cry that you went medium format, I'm one of them. You could have it with the giant pixels of life. Embrace them, eat them for dinner. Speaking of dynamic range, here's one thing. Fuji's known for their color profiles. They got all these different classic neg I like for the photos. I can't use them because everybody's going to choose F-Log. So you need more LUTs, please. You have one LUT, F-Log to Eterna, and I think you have a Rec 709 or something, but give me all your LUTs in a LUT pack, a Fuji LUT pack on your site for free, by the way. No money shall be made here. I want a F-Log to Classic Neg LUT. F-Log to, they have bleach. Bypass, thank you. Let's switch to it. It's amazing. So first I'd like to thank you for this LUT. It's basically a beauty LUT. I'm clipping hard in it. See, I lost all my dynamic range. 
in these profiles, but if I had the magic to play with it after in post, then we'd have something here. I love this. So since the X-H2 is a video centric camera, I want either a fully articulating screen or the one that you had. I don't understand why that wasn't in here. It flips up to appease the loser photographers who take pictures of kittens out in the wild. Oh, look, a kitten, hun. Wow, that's so rare. I never... Oh, I'm in someone's backyard. I didn't even... Oh, Helen. Is this... Oh, they're calling the cops. I better delete the photo. That was close, Helen. What's that, sir? You were calling the photo awards for best kitten shot? I would have won for sure. Oh, God. I deleted it. We're in pro neg high now. Just pure darkness in the shirt. That's a cron cron testy one. Oh, God. Oh, don't leave that in. Just edit it out. You can sound smart. Pretend. So give us that tilt up, tilt down, and fully swing out screen on the X-T100. Now, something that needs to be improved. For some reason, Fuji leads the industry and trails the industry in this one factor, which is auto exposure. It used to step noticeably. It'd be like, poof, 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 poof. there, perfectly exposed. Like, it was terrible. Then they fixed it in a firmware update. But there's these wild swings. I don't understand it. When I was doing that review of the Viltrox lens, just take a look at this. Everything's all cool. Then I go to sit down in the tree and it's just like, wow, boom. Like there was no sunlight coming out and then darkness falls upon us. We defeat the evil here at Fuji. I don't know why it happens. And it happens quite often, even in here, just literally you change a bit and then you see the darkness over here. It's just so noticeable. I saw that. <laughs> Sony's so much smoother, Canon smoother, Nikon smoother, like everybody is. It's just a firmware update away. Just play with it, play with it, and maybe let us set face priority exposure mode. Something's off. We can't change anything in here, but in the X-H2, we can now, finally. Face priority auto exposure. Auto exposure. I'll leave. I would like improved IBIS with a gyroscopic data center in the brain of the sensor that reads out in real time using the Sony Catalyst Browse software immediately done. I think that's what it does with digital stave. It uses gyroscopic data. It doesn't work all that well. It kind of does. So improve it. You've done okay. Be better. What I really want is 480p. Someone give it to me. I don't care if it's 720p. And for those who are confused and keep complaining in the comments, oh, why are you see calling it 480p? It's 400 FPS. Look in the menu, asshole, of any camera. 24p. 120p. That's what we call it. it. Takes three times less time to say it. Don't make me slap you in the baby. We're in classic neg. Things got orange fast. And even more clippy. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I think we're probably going to need 4K 120p in there as well. But somehow, I don't care if it's 480p, 480p. I don't know, I understand now, it's confusing. 480 frames per second in 480p technology upscaled to 1080p. It doesn't have to look that good. I found Sony ZV-1 with the 960. I'm just trying to run across the street and live to tell about it to tell the tales of my travels. We don't need like the best image. It looks good enough. Just give me fun. The higher, the better. When it comes to the custom dials, should we keep the traditional, like whoever used that? To this day, I cannot tell you if the ISO or the shutter is on the right or the left. I have no idea. They're both, I, cause sometimes I'm in front of the camera, sometimes I'm behind and then my brain flips it. Those are useless. Give me the custom mode dial like you did on the XS10. That's what I prefer. It's a video shooter's way of life. Nobody's doing this. Nobody's doing it, unless you're in bed. This is the move, fellas. You're learning it here first. So give me a mode dial with like four, maybe even five custom modes. 
and each one could have three sub custom modes in them if I choose, which I won't, but they better be in there. And they can obviously save video settings, unlike your XS10, which is in a box right now crying. And when it comes to lenses, we need some wider lenses, homie. This is a 12 mil Samyang freak lens of the bitch. No autofocus available. I gotta be honest with you, I think they dropped the ball pretty hard on that 10 to 24. It could have been something special. A 2.8 to 4, better stabilization, better autofocus, lighter somehow. That would have been nice, but okay, you messed it up. Let's go for a wide prime, 10 mil. And 10 to 12 anywhere? 10 mil 1.8, done. 11 mil, maybe. I'd prefer a 1.4 if it was somewhat in the ballpark of sanity size-wise. Probably won't be, judging by your 50 mil one. That thing scares me, it scares children. But it makes me a little nervous. I don't see any wide primes on the roadmap. It's surprising. Like, they only have the zooms and they're giant. The 10 to 24 is pretty big, and then that 8 to 16 is even bigger. It doesn't have to be that hard. Life can be okay. If you try, you go inside into the third eye area and picture a wide lens coming to you and massage this at the same time. It'll never come. I think the crop sensor bodies have a tougher time making the wide lenses for some reason. I don't understand physics, but Sony full frame like no problem. And there's lots of options available. And they're all fantastic. Whereas you get on the crop, the wideness, the lawa, where is it? Where are you, buddy? This little 7.5 mil Lawa, it's so small and good. It's just the stabilization's a little off. Oh yeah, I swear to God if the image improved to the Fuji, it better not have. But wide lenses are fun. They're good times ahead for all beings. And you need one, Fuji. You don't have any wide primes, it's weird. And I don't mind if you use your old focus motors. In the 16 mil, because for some reason, those seem to work the best. The 18mm Tony 2 and the 16mm 1.4, those are good. So use those if you can't do some new Sony linear shit. So Fuji's a fun company. I love the image. They just lack a bit of polish, and these are the areas I think they need to work on. If that X-H2 comes out and it has the rumored like 48 megapixels, I'm done. Because then that would be your photography camera, and then this would be a hybrid and then you have no video centric vlog version that hobos need. So I'm gonna leave, let me know what your thoughts are. XH2, should it be a video centric thing or something stupid? Yeah, you would vote that. There's a poll down below. Thank you for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. All links are available in the Amazon shop for the gear I possess, and I'm gonna leave. Subscribe for my banana